Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Space Quest V, the next mutation, the next Space Quest game in our mega let's play of all the Space Quest games. I've never played this before, it's going to be a completely blind playthrough. I'm a little bit apprehensive because I don't really know how this is going to go with only um, Mark from the two guys from Andromeda. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what it's like. Let's hit uh, see introduction because we want to probably see that before we jump into a game. So here we go. Well, there we go. Um, it looks like this one doesn't have voice acting, which is kind of weird after Space Quest 4 did, but I'll be able to read it out. It's not a problem. Uh, so, it seemed as though we were actually some sort of captain, but it turns out it was just a simulation and we're a, a cadet, which is, I guess, a promotion over janitor, which we were in the other games. Right. His illusions of space throwing grandeur cruelly shattered by Captain Quirk. <laughs> Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy, where he has enrolled himself in an attempt to realise his lifelong dream of becoming a starship captain. The last several months have not been easy for our hero, what with having to juggle time between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. 
but our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolutely past these obstacles, pursuing his goal with unwavering determination, blissfully unaware that fate was about to hurl another spitball in his direction. Of course it is. So here we go then. Story set. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit weird that it doesn't have narration or anything after the last game did, but it's fine. Okay, so it seems like it's a bit of a Star Trek parody to me so far, which is pretty cool. I'm, I'm very happy about that. We've also got our score displayed again, so that's a bit different, but the, the interface is the same. Wow, we hit to 5,000 score in this one? That's pretty crazy. Um, the commands are pretty much the same, though. This panel, when it works, allows the user to call up a 3D holographic schematic of the Starcom Space Academy. Can we use that? Done! The holomap directory isn't working right now, and it's a shame because the map system is really cool looking with... That, uh, gal, gal, I don't even say that, shading. Texture mapping and ray traced images of every room in the complex. Lovely. Um, I might... <coughs> Just put the game speed up a bit, actually, because <clears throat> he's walking quite slowly. Yeah, that's better. All right, well, let's um, let's go down here. So it looks like we've got this central area, which looks like a docking bay or something. Let's um, let's save, and we'll just call the save start or something, I guess. <coughs> um, right, save. And let's start taking a look around, I suppose. What is down this way? Ooh, check this out. What is this? It appears to be one of the nine moons of Nova. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have a talk command. This area is off limits to unauthorized personnel. That means you, cadet. Uh, okay. I mean, what happens if we go in here? Do we get killed or something? <laughs> I imagine they wouldn't kill our own, like their own people, surely. You never know. Why is Elvis here? What on earth? <laughs> Who's this? Or maybe this is the off limits area down here. Yeah, okay. Could well be. Uh, let's... I mean, straight away, the game is more complex than 4 was. Oh, this is like a... An elevator. Okay. Does this take us down to that central area where all the ships were? Uh... Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I, I don't really know... Is it just a faster way of getting around? Doesn't really look like there's anything down there. Okay, well, let's head through. It's always good to take a look around. What is this? This looks suspicious over here. Just another interesting but totally useless example of technological engineering at work. Okay, so it wasn't useful. Although I guess maybe that leads to another area actually, that corridor. Ah, what's this? What is this? This looks... The door to conference room A. Can we... The security clearance is too low to enter this room. In fact, it's so low you need a pass just to go to the restroom. Okay. And this thing? You always wondered what this panel does, but I've never been able to figure out its function. The explanation was probably given in one of the many class lectures slept away during your tenure here at the Academy. <laughs> of course. Well done, Roger. Right, um... Oh, sorry. Wrong button. Is this just going to lead us... Who are these people? Hello! Drop dead, Wilco! Wow, they don't like us, do they? The locker is used by various professors to store teaching aids for their respective classes. Can we... Okay, it's locked. It's a locked locker. Good. Door leads to one of the Academy's classrooms. Currently the students in your space pilot in 101 class are taking the station the Starcon aptitude test. Uh, are we meant to be in there? It looks like we might be meant to be in here actually. Oh, we got five score for that, lovely. Sorry I'm late, Professor. You mean the 
Oh, Starcon aptitude test is today. Yes, sir. I'll get started right away. Uh oh, looks like we didn't prepare. <laughs> what a surprise. What's that? Come talk to you after class? Yes, sir. Oh, God. Oh, dear God. One, Gronko is commanding a Nova class scout ship. When he finds himself face to face with three Horak battle cruisers, he should A, surrender in the face of impossible odds. B, pretend they aren't there. Activate his ship self destruct mechanism. Beam over a pick you up bouquet. Reboot. <coughs> um, <coughs> I don't know. Surrender? That will not be of any help. C. 2. When encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately... No. Uh, beam your entire crew. <coughs> B then A. Broadcast Wagner's ride of the Valkyries over the Comlink. Uh, B then A? I don't, I don't know. I don't think we're supposed to know. Before beaming down to an unexplored planet, for the first time, you should be sure to check to see that your seat belt is fastened and tray tables are locked securely in the upright position. Your fly, your life insurance coverage, the FETs are valve in your oxygen mask, the planet's atmospheric readings, probably E, right? You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapons and a killer android out for your blood. You should, A, gather basic ingredients to make gunpowder and fashion a cannon, stuff a banana in its exhaust pipe, <laughs> drop a big rock on the robot and shout hasta la vista baby, roll in the mud to camouflage yourself, Climb a tree, flap your arms wildly, and scream tweet tweet at the top of your lungs in order to mimic the mating behaviour of the ruby-throated Arcturan swine falcon as a diversion. That is very specific. Let's camouflage ourselves. You're on an EVA with a partner, and you notice his face is turning blue and he's clutching wildly at his throat. This is a sign that A, you'll soon need a new partner. <laughs> In a burst of creative insight, he has created a new dance called the Moonwalk. He is suffering from a vitamin deficiency and needs to eat more leafy green vegetables. He fell for the old golf ball in the air hose trick. Uh, C. Are there 10 questions? To ensure that your crew's microwave meals are heated adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should wrap everything in aluminum foil, cook each meal at the maximum power set so for 45 minutes, Put a live space varmint in each meal, so you can easily determine when it's done. God. Huck the thing and set off a roast in wieners on manoeuvring jets. <coughs> uh, honestly, I don't know. Um, let's do this one. If Grieb leaves the Crab Nebula at... Oh my god. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about the coughing, guys. Um, hmm. I am not even going to attempt to figure this one out. I hope we don't need to get these right. How fast does light travel through a vacuum? I mean, very, 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 very fast. Which is an example of a fuzzy boundary? The area in space between two planetary bodies where a smaller third object is not clearly under gravitational influence of either. The event horizon of a supermassive black hole, place where a receding hair gives way to bare scalp. The point at which the marginal utility of trying to squeeze the last bit of toothpaste from the tube is offset by the opportunity cost of going to the store for a new one. Uh, I'm, it's going to be A or B, right? B. 10. To successfully accomplish a manual molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transporter unit, you should... Uh, jiggle the handle. Uh, A. How did we do? Did we pass? The test's over already? I failed? Oh, help! I mean, what does it mean if we fail? Oh, God. Wow! Can you believe it? Well, <laughs> it turns out you had to pass the test. Oh, God. How are we going to know the answers to this test? That's ridiculous. 
There's no way we can figure out the answers to that, surely. Unless they're, like, stupid... Unless it's the stupid answers or something like that, I don't know. Uh, let's have a bit more of a look around then. God, the game really wants to kill us early, right? I mean, yeah, that is a death, I guess. Anything further around? Oh, we're back into the opening area again. All right, then. So we can get somewhere through that middle area, I guess. So we will do that in the next episode because we're actually out of time. So a very interesting start. Very different so far from uh, Space Quest, well, one to four, really. Uh, but, you know, I'm open-minded and I'm hoping it's going to be good fun. But we've got to pass this test first. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, and Lyle for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you.